All right, so the, the graph y equals absolute value of x, we're going to refer to as the parent graph, the parent function for our absolute value graphs. So um, first off, if I just wanted to, I do seem to be okay for, if I just wanted to, to um, graph, I, I haven't um, aligned, I may have to align here in a minute. Um, if I just want to graph uh, y equals the absolute value of x, sorry, I am going to have to align this, it's just a little bit off. Okay. Um, I can make myself a little xy table, put in some negative values for x, 0, and some positive values. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, of negative 1 is 1, of 0 is 0, 1 is 1, 2 is 2, and graph those points and I should get my v. Negative 2, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, there's my v. Of course, you know, we, we could do that back in Algebra 1, um, but now we get to use the sophistication of using our graphing calculator. So get out your graphing calculator because we're going to investigate some stuff with the graphing calculator. So there's mine. Now you may have some you may need to clear some things out on your graphing calculator. To get to this screen, you press the Y equals button. Okay. Now, if you have anything written uh, for Y1, Y2, you need to clear that. So just hit the clear button. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Okay, let me just hit the clear button. Oh, my calculator doesn't want to work. Let me restart my calculator. I know, technology makes everything so much slower. Come on. Um. Is it a squirrel or is it a cat? I don't know. It's for it's some gaming software that I'm trying to learn how to use, but now I've run out of time to learn how to use it. Yes, make math games. Doesn't get much more fun than that. Okay, Let's see if the calculator works better this time. All right. So you arrow down here to your your y1 function and you hit the clear button. Let's let's make sure that's clear. Now everything's working good. Okay, also from last week, you may have your statistics plots left on. You don't want them on when you're just graphing functions because you'll keep getting these errors. So if you're, if you have either plot one, plot two, or plot three darkened, then you use the arrow key to get up there to those plots and you hit enter. And now those plot, those stat plots are no longer turned on. They won't keep giving you error messages. All right, next thing I want to do is graph absolute value of x. Absolute value, to get to that, you have to hit the math key. Then you have to arrow over to num, and then you see the words abs, abs. You can hit, hit enter or the number one, okay? I want to do absolute value of x, so then I'll get the x, which is right next to the alpha key, second row there. Close my parentheses, although you don't have to close your parentheses. And to get a graph that is centered at 0, 0, like you'd like your functions to be, um, you need to reset your window, and a good way to do that would be to do a zoom, number six, zoom standard. 
Now this gives me a graph um, where the x-axis goes from negative 10 to positive 10, the y-axis goes from negative 10 to positive 10, and it has graphed the absolute value. Okay? We all there? You got it cleared up for her? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, next thing we're going to do is see what happens when we change this absolute value function a little bit. So let's see what happens if I type in absolute value of x and I say plus 3. So find that absolute value again x. I'm going to close my parentheses and say plus 3. Now I put that in the y2 function because I'm going to graph both of those functions at the same time. In y1 I have the parent graph and in y2 I have a translation. And what has happened? What has happened? Oh. So abs x close parentheses plus three. Uh, then I hit the graph button. All right, what has it done? It has translated this graph up by how much? Three. So I have a translation of three. Where was the vertex of the original graph? At the origin. Or at the origin. Where is the vertex of the translated graph? Zero, three is where the vertex is. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's go in my third function down here. Let's do abs x close parentheses minus 4. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to go upside down? Do you think what do you think is going to happen? It's exactly, it makes a lovely chevron pattern and it has made the graph go lower. If you have integers exactly as I have, then you would get the same graph, but you may not have. So if I add or subtract a number after the absolute value, I'm just taking my graph and I'm moving up or down. Okay, now let's try a different translation. I'm going back to my y, my, my, um, y equals screen. I'm going to clear out these functions. And we're going to try doing the absolute value of x. And I'm going to do plus 3 inside the absolute value sign. So... I'll do absolute value x plus 3, then close the parentheses. <clears throat> and when I hit graph, what has it done? It has moved it to the left. Plus 3 has moved it to the left by 3. So if we had subtracted, we expect it to go to the right? Oh, I hope that works. I know that it does, but let's just see.
x. I'm going to do minus 4 just for something different and graph that and minus 4 x minus 4 all inside the absolute value has made it move to the right by 4. Okay, how do you think we should turn this thing upside down? Negative. All right, so let's try that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put that negative in a particular place. So I'm going to put that negative out front of the absolute value. And then I'll put in the absolute value of x. Close my parentheses and hopefully I'll have something that's upside down. Yeah, it makes a nice picture too. I did absolute value, I did negative absolute value x. You can always see my commands up here if you look at the little boxes. Okay. Two more translations to go. And then we'll put it all together. All right, I'm going to put a um, 4. I'm going to do absolute, y equals absolute value of 4. I'm saying y equals 4 times the absolute value of x. Any guesses what it's going to do? Yeah, it's going to make a V. Good, good, good concept. What did it do? It got skinny. It got narrow. That's called a vertical stretch. It got skinny. Okay, yes. Vertical stretch is, is when it's getting stretched up on the vertical axis. And in other words, it's making it skinny. Um, we'd also like to make it wide. Any guesses for how we could make it wide? Multiply by a negative. Let's go. Oops, what did I do there? Y equals, okay. Second, insert, negative. So negative four. It just get, did the vertical stretch upside down. Interesting. So my last thing I got to do is figure out how to make this wide. All right, I'm going to put my fraction in. How about one half? There's a fraction. So I'm going to put it in 0.5. Um, you go to the right of where you want to insert, and then you hit second delete, and you insert. Okay, what did putting one half do? Made it wider. Fra that's called a horizontal stretch. Fractions between zero and one, actually fractions between negative one and one, make it wide um, when you multiply it before the absolute value. We're not going to put that stretch inside the absolute value like the ones we did yesterday because that was a pain. Uh, it's called a horizontal stretch. Okay, so let's see where we're going here. We've done all these little graphs. Okay, so the the format for the absolute value function uh, is is not going to look like we did yesterday. It is y equals a times the absolute value of x with no coefficient here, minus h, close the absolute value, plus k. And that is going to be a translation, or actually a transformation, of 
y equals absolute value of x, which is the parent function, where h, k is the new vertex. So I'll grab the vertex off here, h, k. We translate right if h is positive, left if, if h is negative. We translate up if k is positive, down if k is negative. And the slope is represented by that letter a. So the slope of the right side of the v is going to be that letter A, and the slope of the left side of the V is going to be the opposite of A. Okay, so <clears throat> let's put that into a little bit of action here. Do them one at a time again. Do we need to know which uh, yeah, but it may, so the, the most important bullet points um, to write down, I would think, the, are the where the vertex is and that the slope is A. And then these the other two, the left, right, and the up and up, down, maybe that will be better by example, you know, because we have just done those. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll graph one. I'll show you what that means. <coughs> going to be better to look at an example, I think, than in the words. Uh, waiting, waiting. I was going to, I know, I was going to push the button. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. All right, we ready? Yes, enough. Okay. Y equals absolute value of X minus 2. What does that do to the original absolute value of X graph? That is a down 2 translation. So what does that one look like? Well, that is the absolute value of x minus nothing, minus 2. So my h is 0, my k is negative 2. So my vertex is at 0, comma, negative 2. My slope, the a number, Oh, there's no number here to the left of the absolute value, so my slope is 1. So that means the slope on the right is 1, up 1, right 1, boom. Slope on the left is negative 1, which is up 1, left 1, boom. Okay. Onward. If I have y equals absolute value of x plus 4, that's y equals absolute value of x plus 4 plus 0. So my h is 4, my k is 0, which means my vertex is at 4 comma 0. Oops, my h is negative 4, sorry. It's, it's the inverse, yes. Um, the, this actually is, let me go backwards a little bit here. Absolute value, whoops, backwards one more. This is the absolute value of x minus negative 4 plus 0. My h is negative 4, my k is 0. My vertex is at negative 4, 0. They kind of go in the, in the opposite order. So this is x plus 4, so my vertex is negative 4, comma 0. Um, so because in, my, in the format for the 
uh, transformation function, it's x minus h. So I change that plus to a minus. And if I change the plus to a minus, I have to change the four to a negative. Yes, ma'am. Right. Right. No, you don't change the k. Is that what you're asking? Are you asking? Oh, yeah. You, you don't change the sign of the k. You change the sign only on the h. Okay. All right. So my, my vertex is at negative 4, 0. My slope is 1. So up 1, right 1. Up, up 1, left 1. That is a translation to the left by 4. Okay. <clears throat> the graph of y equals one fourth absolute value of x. That's y equals one fourth absolute value of x minus zero. There's no number there. Plus zero. So my h k, my vertex is at zero zero. But my slope are one fourth and negative one fourth. So my vertex is at zero, zero. I go up one, right four, one, two, three, four, and put a dot. I go up one and left four and put a dot. There's my function. And I call that a horizontal stretch. Okay. Now I'm going kind of fast at this point. If I want a vertical stretch of six, oh well that's just a slope of six. So that's so I make my a six and I and I get y equals six times the absolute value of x. Okay. Now we'll do the hard part. What's the equation of this graph? Where's the vertex? Okay, um, so I need my h, my k, and I need my a. What's the slope of this graph? What's the slope, let's say, of the right side of this graph? Ne negative 3 over 1, so my a, I look at the right side of the graph, that's negative 3. So write my equation, negative 3 times the absolute value of x minus 0 plus 0. Boom. Not too bad. Last one. See if you can figure out the equation of this graph. The slope's 1, so don't worry about an a. And the vertex looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, so negative 4, comma, 2. Y equals absolute value of X plus 4. Oh, you're right, negative 2, minus 2. Yes, sir.